Hello and welcome to MaryCast. This is Dr. Mark Miravalli. We're talking about prophecies from 1945 through the 1950s, early 1950s, all of which are having a huge impact on the world and the church right now in the 21st century. In our last program, I gave a little introduction to the prophecies of the Lady of All Nations, prophecies given by the mother of Jesus to a Dutch woman, Ida Perdeman. Once again, these messages have been deemed to be of supernatural origin by the bishop, Bishop Joseph Maria Punt of Amsterdam on May 31st of 2002. But I would say, and, and I'd encourage our, our viewers to open up this material to anyone, not to just Catholics or to Christians. That's the nature of these prophecies. These prophecies are, are so amazing in their precision and how they're all at once coming together right now that it, it leads to credibility. It leads to belief in the authenticity. And the, these social political prophecies are just a means to prepare us for the spiritual remedy. Our Lady doesn't just come to, to predict things in the future. She comes to help her children and she will give a remedy, uh, two key remedies for this uh, process of rather unprecedented economic and political and social and moral turmoil uh, which, he, which he prophesies for the 21st century. But I want you to hear some of the specific messages yourself. So I, I want to read some of these messages to you. I'm reading from a document which comes, it's been translated from Dutch. It comes from the Lady of All Nations official website in Amsterdam uh, with the approval of the bishop, Bishop Joseph Punt of Amsterdam. And this will contain these, these these messages will, will, will specify to you just how clearly these things were predicted and what it means for us today. So I'm going to read from this article from that website and, and comment on it. It is March 25th, 1945. A young woman from Amsterdam named Ida Perdeman is sitting with her three sisters by the iron stove. Father Frehe, the assistant of their local Catholic church, is also present. While they are engaged in a lively discussion, something strange happens. Ida reports seeing a magnificent light appear. It's as if her surroundings cease to exist. She sees a beautiful female figure emerging from the light who begins talking to her. This will be the first in a series of 56 reported apparitions that would last until 1959. The figure reveals her name, quote, I am the Lady, Mary mother of all peoples. She says that she has been sent by God the Father and by His Son, Jesus Christ, to help humanity. She warns the world from sliding down into, quote, degeneration, disasters, and war, and prophesies the danger of a third global catastrophe beyond the first two world wars. The lady states that she wants to save people, of the peoples of the world, from these calamities. And she then gradually unfolds her plan for saving our contemporary age. The messages begin with prophecies of a social and political nature, but with an unmistakably spiritual outcome. The Second World War is coming to an end when the Lady appears for the first time. She announces that the war will be over in May of 1945. She shows the seer a rosary and calls for perseverance in prayer. The Lady then turns her gaze into the future. The visionary receives an image of the exodus of the Jewish people from Egypt. And she hears, quote, but Israel will rise again, end quote. In fact, the independent state of Israel is declared three years later, in 1948. This prophecy is accompanied by a rebuke about the way the Jewish people would take possession of the land and deny the rights of the Palestinian people, quote, and Yahweh is ashamed of his people, end quote. Soon after, the visionary sees a red flag in China. Four years later, in 1949, after a bloody civil war, the People's Republic of China is declared. Later, in 1945, the visionary is shown the first landing on the moon. Quote, the lady points out at something, and I see the moon before me very clearly. There is something flying down onto that moon, end quote. This prophecy would take almost 25 years to fulfill with the Apollo 11 moon landing in 1969. 
In several visions and messages, the upcoming Cold War and Iron Curtain periods are shown to the seer several years before they're taking place, as well as their eventual collapse. The lady points at a thick line in Germany, and she says, quote, Europe is divided in two, end quote. I will remove that line with one sweep of my hand. However, the end of the Cold War will not bring peace. The lady repeat, repeatedly warns humanity of a new downward spiral into, quote, degeneration, disaster, and war. She insists on a return to God and his virtues of justice, truth, and love, quote, these are not to be found among men. Righteousness, truth, and love. The visionary sees a cross in the center of the world, and the lady points at it. The seer, Ida, then states, quote, I have to take it upon me, but I turn away my head. It is as if I am representing humanity, pushing away the cross. No, says the lady, quote, it has to be accepted and be placed in the center. First, back to him. Only then there can be peace, end quote. And you see what's happening here, that Our Lady uses Ida as a symbol of humanity. Is this not true? Are we not, as a human family, essentially refusing to accept the cross? Uh, not recognizing Jesus, but wanting peace. Peace won't come without Jesus Christ. That's the ticket. He's the Prince of Peace, and Our Lady is the Queen of Peace, bringing this message. And so it is so typical that Our Lady would be focusing on the cross and returning the cross to the center of the world. This article goes on. Economic, excuse me, the, the message goes on to describe a period of increasing moral degeneration, natural disasters, and conflicts of war, all of which will end in a global catastrophe unless humanity converts. The visionary recounts, quote, I see heavy, thick clouds appearing over Europe, and under them huge waves engulfing Europe. The lady says, quote, Europe be warned. This is not solely an economic battle. The aim is to corrupt the spirit. Economic and political conflicts between America and Europe were also foreseen. The visionary sees the continents lying next to each other, and then she sees the words, quote, economic wars, boycotting, currencies, disasters. Then I see the word hunger and political chaos. The lady says, that is not meant only for your country, but for the entire world. The time when these events are reportedly to take place is a time when unusual climate changes will be apparent. Quote, nature will also change. Disaster after disaster. Natural disasters. The lady goes on, pay attention to meteors. Several wars are also prophesied in these Amsterdam messages. In a 1949 message, the lady predicts war in the Balkans. The seer Eater recounts, quote, suddenly I see the Balkans. There is a war. They are fighting again. The lady says, quote, child, there will be a fierce struggle. We have not seen the end of the struggle yet, end quote. Some 40 years later, the Bosnian and Kosovo wars in the 1990s were of the bloodiest in the history of the Balkan conflict. The lady predicts in 1950 a great conflict and division in Korea, a conflict which continues to worry the minds of world leaders today, particularly in light of North Korea's nuclear capacity. Quote, the fighting in Korea is an omen and beginning of great distress. Then the visionary sees demarcation and intervals being marked out. So, and let me give you one last one, and we're going to have to continue this in our next program. Um, on the geopolitical front, the heavenly woman who describes herself as the lady of all nations or mother of all peoples predicts a new division in the world if changes are not made. The seer Eda Perdiman predicts the vision as fo follows, quote, Suddenly I see Cairo very clearly, and I have a strange feeling about that. Then I see several Middle Eastern peoples, Persians, Iranians, Arabs, others. The lady says, quote, in a way the world will be ripped in two. Now, again, the purpose of this, as we're going to see in our next uh, segment, is remedy. 
She's prophesying the future to give credibility to what she says and the need for both praying the prayer, the whole world praying this prayer of the Lady of All Nations, and a solemn papal definition that the Lady is truly the mother of all people, so she's free to intercede precisely to bring peace into this world. So stay with us in our series on the Lady of All Nations 21st century messages and prophecies for us. This is Dr. Mark Miravalli saying thanks for being with us at MaryCast. God bless.